Hello everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. If this is the first time you've come onto my channel, then hi, I'm Sara. I make beauty and lifestyle content here on YouTube. And if you're new here, then please take a moment to hit the subscribe button down below and join the Sara squad. I make videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. And I'm sure you'll have a great time here. And also don't forget to hit the bell icon right next to it so that every time I upload a video, you get notified. <laughs> very chill sort of a vibe it's a makeup session with me i'm getting ready while i spill the beans on a lot of lot of gossip and hot questions y'all had for me so i've been very very candid in this video i'm spilling the beans on my relationships my boyfriends the nika controversy a lot of life gyan a lot of tips for new youtubers and so much more i've answered almost every single question i got and while we do all of that we are also testing out some new makeup that i got on hokmakeup.com so hit the pause button, go grab a snack if you need to because this is going to be a long ass video and once you've done that then let's dive into today's video. Alright so let's get started, we'll start with skincare because my face looks a little puffy right now, I've just woken up from my sleep and I've already washed my face, I've used the Derma Weave Hydra Cleanser because this is great in the morning time, it just takes away all that excess sebum which has been collected overnight on my face and I'm currently using facial oils on my skin at night time so this works really well for me. Next I'm diving into moisturization and I'm using the Nutridome Vitamin E Moisturizing Lotion as always, this gives a very good base before my makeup prep as a makeup prep and how I'm going to be taking the questions today so I do questions both on my community tab and my Instagram stories so I decided that there were a lot of like collective questions like a lot of people have asked the same thing uh, so th those two to three questions I will address together and apart from that the individual questions I'll try to cover everything if I have not covered anything maybe we could do a, like a part two because I got like a lot of questions I realize that there isn't much of my personal life that I share on social media like I only share photos with my friends or something like that but not stories as such and there's a reason for that you know I feel like when you do that, you make yourself so vulnerable to everybody's opinion and entitlement and judgment. Like even, like you will see, you know, the questions are a lot. Uh, I'm just going to take a little bit of lip balm. Lips feel very dry. This is the Body Shop Born Lippy Lip Balm. Okay, now we are ready to dive into some makeup. So I'm going to start with some eyeshadow because I've bought some new eyeshadow palettes. So I'll zoom you guys in and then we'll get into the questions. Alright, so we are testing new makeup. These are some new eyeshadow palettes from Nika K that I just recently got. Uh, I ordered them on HOK Makeup and this particular eyeshadow, it took a lot of time to come just FYI. Uh, and this particular eyeshadow palette has come like completely shattered. I'll just show you guys. Not completely shattered but one eyeshadow in this was like totally shattered. Their packaging is not the best, they just wrapped it in one bubble wrap. All three of these eyeshadow palettes in one bubble wrap. So I'm lucky that only one eyeshadow shattered. I didn't take the effort to return it because it was just one eyeshadow and the delivery took so long. So I was like when will the exchange happen? This is the under the sea palette. And then the next one I have right here is the poison apple palette. This is my personal favourite because these colours scream my name this is actually the one we are going to mostly use in today's video and they had an amazing discount on all three of these for 999 like three eyeshadow palettes for 999 and they individually retail at some 560 or something today's video is damn chill by the way because we are talking and gossiping and getting ready uh okay so this is the purple one this is called sugar plum and i really like this one as well going to look like a dupe of the huda beauty mini obsessions palette the packaging is pretty flimsy but i'm not complaining because if the shadows are good then what do you really want i just want to quickly apologize if i'm going to say any of your names incorrectly i'm really sorry because there are a lot of names here but the first question i'm going to take from my community tab and Devadrita Gupta asks have you been bullied or gossiped about because of your channel uh, if so did you get back at them in any way so I have not been bullied as such because uh, I feel like the bullying situation is we are like way past that uh, we are like adults now that doesn't happen if I was a school child maybe I would have been Oh god, this is gonna be a mess. Alright, so getting back to it, I have not been bullied as such, but of course I have been gossiped about a lot. Like I can see, uh, like indirectly also people do taunt me about it, will make fun of me about it because initially of course I, I am doing makeup and makeup is not very delicate. 
uh, accepted in the Indian community. Like, you know, there's a lot of judgment that goes around when you're doing makeup content. Even if you're doing comedy as such, like people don't support you initially and that is fine. And um, I mean, I do not get back to anyone because I really don't care. I have a very I don't care attitude towards people that don't matter in my life. If my friends were to do that, of course, I would be hurt. Uh, and then I would think of, you know, like confronting them and asking them why would they do that. But touch wood, Alhamdulillah, my friends are really, really supportive of me. They were the reason I started my channel. So uh, if my friends were supporting me, I didn't surely care as much about other people gossiping about me. So I just let it go. Uh, the next question is by Manish Yati 2017. And he asks, do you wish to continue medical after MBBS? Um, so this is something like about my future you guys I still contemplate okay like things are changing by the day I think there was a time that I knew for sure that okay this is what I want so like my future oh god these shadows are so dusty I'm so glad I decided to do my eyeshadow first initially in my starting years of both YouTube and uh, college like I started YouTube when I was in my second year of my medical career my OP so um that time I was like very sure that this is a passion project, this is a hobby, it's a side hustle, I'm not going to be taking it very seriously and medical is of course at the forefront because I put a lot of my energy into studying and getting my career right in that form. I always call that my career not YouTube. Uh, but things have changed in this year, since this year started, things have just taken like, I have, I'm confused, honestly speaking I'm really really confused because um, YouTube is now picking up. I understand the full potential of it now. I don't. I did not understand it before. And uh, medical is like at a halt right now. So I can't really like everything is at a halt when it comes to my OT career. Uh, my exams are being postponed every single week, every single month. Nothing like absolutely nothing is being done on that forefront. And I'm not even one of those people who've completed my degree so I can go get a job. So I understand what is it, in, what is in it for me. Job wise, of course, I love the whole idea. I got into medical because I wanted to have a job that helps people, that interacts with people. I want to have that human touch, you know, as great as YouTube is. It allows me to have a community. It allows me to meet all you guys from all over the world. It's It lacks the human touch. And I love the human touch being an artist gives me. Like, you know, meeting people, helping people, in return, receiving that love and affection from a patient. I cannot explain in words you guys that is uh, like that is remarkable to me that is something I crave for from like the job satisfaction that comes it comes from that you know like when you're helping someone out to be able to do their basic needs when they're ill and to get that satisfaction in return that is ultimate so I think yes I will definitely not discard my medical career completely because I've put my hard work my blood sweat and tears into studying and uh, I don't want to let that go. Okay, next question from my YouTube tab is by Suzy Poo and that is how many boyfriends have you had? And this whole boyfriend topic is a big like a lot of people have asked this. So I'm just going to tip 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 all of the questions that have come about how many boyfriends have I had or how many exes have I had. So in general, if I tell you like I've not had many boyfriends as such. Like I've not uh, been a big time relationship person. I'm just gonna take this and again put it in my crease um, Because like I said, you know, I've been a very big nerd all my growing up years and I was in a girls school So I did not have that much interaction with boys I of course knew a lot of guy friends from tuition and like you know how you meet them in Classes and stuff that you go to I also knew a lot of guys and of course they did ask me out and stuff when you know you get to that age but I was such a focused person that I knew no matter what like school life I have been so focused I have only had one intention in life that I want to come first and every I'm a big nerd huh, guys I'm just letting you know I'm a big nerd so every year I had to had to come first in class and that takes a lot of focus and I, you know how Indian parent mentality that you know if you get into all these boys colour you'll not be able to study and stuff so that is what I went by and so I did not I was a very good child in school and stuff even now I am but uh, I did not date or you know get along with boys at all in school life and stuff 
Of course, like I flirted around, had flings and stuff in school and junior college, but never got into a relationship till my 12th standard. I was very focused on my studies. And then when I got into medical, finally I got into OT. I got into my dream college, Sages Medical College, KEM Hospital. KEM, if you're from Mumbai, if you're from Maharashtra, you know what a hype it is to get into KEM, you know, like it's it's the dream college. So even when I didn't get into MBBS, I wanted to get into KEM, like that was it for me. Like I didn't want to get into any random institute. Institution matters a lot. So I got into KEM, that was like the dream and I got there. And once I got into KEM, once I was already in medical, then I opened my, you know, opened the playground to see if, if there's anything up here for me in the dating playground. And yeah, then after that, I did date somebody in my first year of medical so i met somebody to a mutual friend from a different medical college he was doing mbbs and uh, i was in OP. so we met through uh, a mutual friend at a different college in the college fashion show and yeah it was nice the only thing i think was a problem that we did not know each other at all before we dove into a relationship like we directly jumped for the for the relationship so he said he likes me and stuff and we should try dating and stuff so we did and even I liked him and everything, you know. I liked him as a person and I'm still friends with him. So he, as a person, he was great. It was just that compatibility factor wasn't really there because we didn't have the same interests, same likes, dislikes. And I always tell him that if had we been friends before we started dating, uh, this wouldn't have happened. Like, you know, we wouldn't have dated only because we knew that we, we didn't, uh, we weren't that compatible. But, but we didn't give ourselves that opportunity. So we first dated, that didn't work out. So now we are friends. So yeah, that was the brief relationship I had in the first year. And then after that, I just dove into my career yet again. Like second year, I started doing YouTube. Second year, third year. And then final year now, yes, I was dating somebody last year and till the beginning of this year. Uh, and that was, I think, my first very serious relationship. We knew each other. We were friends for like three years. Not the best of friends, but we were really close. And like he was my only guy friend. And he, like we were really, really close to each other. And the idea of dating was bizarre to both of us right from the beginning. Like we were not in it for the dating. Of course, we were just friends. And uh, a lot of people used to tell us why or don't date and stuff like that. But we were feeling in each other. And that feeling came when. I went, well, like he went off to study last year. So that is when I realized that, you know, I felt like a part of me had gone. And that is when it hit me that I actually do like this guy a lot. A like, which is more than just a friend sort of a situation. So I told him I loved him. And then that is when we started dating. And I'm a person who doesn't say I love you till I genuinely feel it, okay? So unless I feel it, I don't, I can't say it. I just can't say it. My system is immune to the word unless I feel it like theory. So when I said it last year and I was the first one to say it, I knew that I felt it really strong and the relationship was, I would still say, one of my best relationships I've ever... It was the only one, but it was the best experiences of my life. Yes, because he was already abroad, it was long distance, so it sucked big time. Um, I know there are a lot of people that can pull off long distance, but in our case, a lot of things were not happening right. Like it was the right people, you know, sometimes the people are right, the time isn't right. It was something like that. So there's another question by somebody who asked me, why did we break up? Uh, so I'm just going to tap into that right now and the reason why we broke up was purely long distance. It was not happening. Like the thing was, we both are not working already so we don't have our lives figured out and we can't just take one flight when something goes wrong and travel because this is the US we are not talking about London or Dubai or something which is close by right that I can just travel three to four hours and come back this is US it's 24 hours by flight so it is far away I know it's 16 hours but it is far away and the time this difference between the two of us was 13 and a half hours so when I used to wake up in the morning for college he was going back to bed after a hectic day at work so our conversations were really like, you know, um, like in the initial days when we were getting to know each other better and everything was working out really, really well. And I think like we had long distance figured out really well because we were uh, very practical people and very, very in it together, you know. So both of us felt the right things at the right time. Everything was working out really well and that's why I was so confident about our relationship so much so to share it on social media. So yeah, we, we were very, very seriously into it. It just didn't work out. Like, there was a lot of lack of communication. And I think 
uh, that is the main thing you need to have a lot of good communication and it was just not there so yeah that is why uh, first we ended up taking a break because the idea of breakup was uh, it was a little intense but yeah so we took a break and uh, the break was sort of really good for the both of us so I think so then we both came down to the conclusion that I think now is not the time for us and when, I, when we broke up it was not like you know it was just like we gave it our all it's not working out right now it's just very heartbreaking it was a very tough time this this happened like 28th Feb 28th Feb was the day so it was just recent you know so and then the lockdown happened and covid hit and everything just was going downhill so it was a horrible period and like always i find my therapy in work so i would film more content film more videos put myself out there a lot <clears throat> and i was getting a lot of questions on my instagram uh, like whenever i would take q and a's on instagram every single time i would be asked that how are you dealing with long distance and how are you dealing with this and how are you dealing with that and understand you all come from a comforting point of view you all want opinions also for your relationships I had none to give so it would hurt a lot and I would I was in a bad space okay I was really in a bad space to even talk about it which is why I did not address it you know so when wounds don't heal this is something I've learned the hard way is that you can only address something if you heal from it like right now Alhamdulillah, I'm grateful that I've healed from the wound to be able to talk to you all. I would not say I'm completely healed, but I am at least 90%, 80% healed from that wound to be talking to you all about it. Okay, okay, this is what happened. I was not healed initially to just go on Instagram or go on stories or go on uh, YouTube and say, you know what, we broke up. Like, it's it, it's feelings, it's not a switch, you know, you can just not switch it off and be like, ha, khatam ho gaya. So, that is the reason why I did not address it before and that is the reason why I did not want to address it at all. I've learned my lesson. These uh, mats are really good by the way. Really, they blended so beautifully. I could not phrase it before but they blended really well. But the shimmer is not that great. Like with the brush, it's stuck and it's falling off. So I'm going to try using the shimmer with my finger. I've, I think I've taken this one, right? Yeah. They feel very like sticky, sticky and ooh, they are so pigmented. So yeah, that is all about the boyfriend drama in my life that you all all wanted to know about love life, boyfriend life, number of ex-boyfriends, number of current boyfriends, zero. Okay, next question is by Namrata. How did you get into makeup? What made you interested? So makeup for me was therapy, literally makeup for me was therapy because I had this serious cystic acne issue and I address this a lot of times on my channel that I had like serious cystic acne. This is the color I'm taking the first one yeah so uh, because of that I decided to buy like a full coverage foundation because I'm not confident in my skin I was not confident with my acne and I just wanted to hide my face behind makeup so yes I did not start off the very good intention that oh I like it or oh I like colors or stuff like that I did not know the full potential of makeup till I dove into it um, I just wanted to buy a full coverage foundation and hide my face and I would put a lot of foundation and a lot of compact not concealer but just foundation and compact and lipstick and lipstick has been my forever love like even when I was a little kid I used to wear lipstick my mom's lipstick and go to parties and my birthday parties and all I've always worn lipstick I don't remember a time I have not worn lipstick that is why the love for lipstick is undying so I slowly and steadily dove into it got my hands on a lot more products slowly and steadily learned a lot of tricks techniques and then the love was like it was a relationship that never ended it was a relationship that I gave all my trust to and yeah it has always paid me back well I'm just gonna clean all the fallout I'm really happy with how the eyes look actually like Everything just blended really well you guys. These shadows are bomb. Okay, there's one question about my first kiss and I've already addressed this in my first video so I'm just gonna leave it here for whoever asked that. Uh, my firsts are all over there. That was the first personal video I made on this channel. And the next question is another thing that has been asked multiple times and that is will I start shopping from Nykaa again now that they've taken responsibility. So I want to address this once and for all. I did not make that video with an intention to cancel the brand and I mentioned that 10,000 times in that video. I gave a disclaimer and everything. 
what I I called it my working experience with them. So yeah, that being said, I did not just get up one fine day and be like, "Aaj kuch nahi karne ke liye naika ki agli video banate." You know, I thought that video through and through. I wrote it down what I had to mention. I spoke to a lot of creators because that was yes my point of view and also Deep's point of view. But uh, barring that, I also made sure that I know that this behavior is not just with us. It's in general with a lot of creators. Different numbers also. Like even if you think our numbers are very less, it's also with some of the like you mid-range creators. I would say. So yeah, I did do a lot of research before I just sat down and filmed that video. And I could not address those topics like what other creators told me because you guys, that is not my point of view and that is not my. Uh, those are not my words for me to say it in a video. So I didn't do that. But yeah, I can't be a hypocrite now and be like, "Chalo, chalo, wapas, wapas." They just because they. Uh, fired their CEO, which I know has not happened because I made that video. It's because of the diet sabya post, and I'm very very happy that that happened because workplace harassment. I know it's very normalized, and it's like ha sabhi jaga hota. I got a lot of comments on that video saying you're uh, just being, you know, like very unreasonable. This happens everywhere, but why should this happen everywhere? You know, now that we are talking about everything and we are raising our voices against everything, it's high time that we raise our voice against things like this. This should not be normalized. Workplace harassment. Should not be normal. As you can't just say that if I want to survive in business, I will have to be harassed for my gender, or for being pregnant, or for being taking a maternity leave, or for having a sick aunt. This is all that has happened. I know it happens in other com companies as well, not just Nike. But you know, raise your voice. Start saying things. Start use the voice, the power of the internet for the right reason. Stop all this. You know. So that is why I made that video. That ha workplace harassment to hogya creators ke saath jo hua hai. Like no other creator should face the same experience I faced because no other creator was being approached by them for such free work or from any company for free work. Stop doing that. I was a fool. I did that. I said that in the video also that I'm a fool that I did that. But you don't make the same mistake as me. So working with them, of course, if they don't give me fair opportunities again, I will never work with Nike again because if they are, that is them not taking responsibility, right? If they are giving fair chances, if they are making. Amends and uh, you know, like they are going to start paying their creators, not exploiting their creators. Whoever new faces they are bringing on their channel are going to be paid for. Because a lot of creators reached out to me after that video said the same thing happened to them. They received the same emails and stuff like that. So if those habits change, yes, I will think about working with them again. If they, which I don't think will happen, you guys. Like even though the video has become so viral, way more than I expected, and we stood up for things because. Uh, if you all don't know, Shweta Vijay and I are also made a video addressing my video, which I'm so grateful to her for. Like, I was literally in tears when I saw that because I was like, somebody supporting me, somebody thinks it's right. I know I got a lot of support in the comment section of my video, but I was not getting like apart from Deep, there was no creator support coming my way. So I was very scared that I mean, mom and dad were very scared for me to take out that video. I'm going to be very honest here that they were very very scared that. Um, Because we are not from this industry, we don't know how the ropes of this work, and if calling a brand out would cause a lawsuit or something like that, and I was not ready for that kind of drama in my life, but I still did it. So imagine, like, I went against my parents to put up that video, you know. So I just believed in it so strongly that I wanted to put it out there. So Shweta, ma'am, making that video is everything to me. I was so grateful, so thankful to her. That she actually addressed my video and said that yes, my point of view was correct because I was not bashing the brand or bashing. It was just my work experience. And when it comes to shopping with Nike again, like I said in that video, you know, I want to give a fair chance to other makeup brands as well. Like I shop from H O K Makeup here. I want to see what other companies hold as well because I was such a Nike lover. I was living in this Nike bubble. कि मैंने कभी कोई और ब्रांड से शॉप ही नहीं किया. Like I've never shopped from another platform. So I want to see if we as uh, customers, if we as consumers, don't give other brands opportunity, then how do you expect other brands to grow? How do you expect other brands to up their service, their customer service, their quality check? That's why I want to continue to shop from more places. Like I I mentioned all the alternative websites that I found out before I made that video. Because I didn't want to be a hypocrite. When I sat to make that video, I knew that once I put this video out, I can't sit and do Nike hauls on my channel again. I just can't do that. And I personally also in my life can't uh, sit and shop from Nike every single day while I make that video. I can't do that. So I need to know that there are alternative platforms that I can choose. 
so yeah i am very much abiding by that and shopping from alternative websites every month i try to shop like this month i did from h okay makeup next month i try shopping from foxy so i am adding my cards everywhere giving every platform their fair chance so yeah that change that i've made i'm going to hold on to it unless like it's brands like too faced or ofra or which other companies like absolutely no well fla beauty nix also i don't get all the products on all the website and nix is exclusively on nike according to their instagram page so if if it's su such companies then why not you know like i said i'm not cancelling the brand so why not shop from um, those companies from that particular platform and buy other things from other websites like i've been shopping a lot on mintra and amazon also like body shop products i just bought on mintra then i shop on amazon and i just add like a maybelline lipstick if my maybelline lipstick is over because uh, amazon is trustworthy if you see the seller you should always see the seller on amazon okay if that particular brand is only retailing it or the the brands uh, go down is retailing it then yes it is uh, genuine and you can buy it but if it's some random ass seller then you should not buy it then you can't trust that makeup like a lot of things are genuine on amazon they set up their own stores like one plus phones only have their stores on amazon so just like that some makeup companies do have their stores on amazon like this plume sponges they only have their store on amazon i don't think they retail on nike so like that if those things are there then you i do buy on um, amazon as well i have been shopping very much on amazon you know what a impulsive buyer i am when it comes to amazon so yeah i have made that change i'm not going to go back to uh, doing big big hauls on nike if suppose i want to buy my ofra highlighter and that time only there's a deal on another thing i might just add it to cart but not full blown hauls not at all and they start respecting their creators and consumers i think that will be the buy out and end all for me and how will i come to know about that i think i'll just know i think i'll know and if i know i will update you all but right now yeah that is the update like if there's no other place i can shop that brand from i will shop on nike if i can find that brand somewhere else i will not so that's the tea on that that's the update on that like i said you know you guys cancel culture is stupid you can't cancel somebody completely especially a giant like nike which has such great reach and uh, so such a great store and market for so many companies and so many brands who have invested their money into nike you can't just get like say cancel all together like no 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 aisa to maine video mein bhi nahi bola tha i i justified myself so many times it's just that i feel like people don't watch the complete video and come up with your own interpretations of the same uh, so i i request you that please watch that video completely to understand where i'm coming from all right so the next question is japan chang who asks uh, how do you get your prs so for me personally prs is not something that came to me uh, back in the day it's just it's new to me it's just starting uh, and i have reached out to brands also like if i want to test out products from that said brand because a lot of my subscribers you guys keep asking me you know test this out try this out so i reach out to brands uh, via email and ask them if they could send products over so i could try them out and stuff and the other way is of course the normal way that brands samne se reach out to you and tell you that they've launched so and so thing and they want you to test it out and uh, they would love to send it over so then in that case it's the brands who send you pr samne so it's both ways and both of this only happens when you like cross a certain mark you know like now i'm confident enough to ask brands if i want to try their products out or brands reach out to me that much it was not the case in the beginning of course the next question is have you always been sure about your sexuality yes i have i feel like i've reached that point that i am very sure about my sexuality this is because i mean i'm not really been with girls to uh, be excited about that or tell you how that experience feels and i have always been satisfied being with guys so i think i am straight i'm very sure about that also the idea of being with girls doesn't excite me so i've always been sort of sure about my sexuality that confusion phase was never really there also i'm using Oh my god things are falling into my body and stuff I'm using this LA colors uh red rouge blush this is a very nice blush ever since I got it from HOK makeup only I've been using it this is in the color awesome and it's really really awesome it comes with this brush as well which of course I wouldn't use but uh, it's a very nice it's a cool toned mauve it's not a warm toned color at all and so it might look a little white washed on some people it looks really pretty without makeup as well and also with makeup it looks really really nice very muted toned down nice color okay so hardly ever chank will ask what has quarantine taught you um a lot of things definitely a lot of things 
uh, realizing to find comfort in routine because I would love to break up my routine. I used to not like to have a routine. I used to um, switch it up, you know, but finding comfort in routine, finding comfort within myself, my family, uh, my home, um, finding comfort in the smallest of things. Happiness, I wouldn't say because I've always touched wood. I have, I'm a very content person. I will never be, yeah, I'm not happy. You know, I am happy wherever I am. Uh, with whatever I am, I'm a very content person like that. So it's not about the happiness in the smallest of things. I've always been grateful for that. But just finding comfort in the smallest of things. Not having to find comfort in external things. Just finding comfort within your home. I think that's the major thing that's happened to me in this quality. Okay, and the next question is by Nandini. She asks tips for new YouTubers. This is another recurring question. And uh, one, like I have a lot of things to say to new creators. One of them being that be consistent. Consistency matters a lot. If you're planning to come on YouTube or any platform for that matter, Instagram, be very, very consistent with your content. Realize what is it that you want to make content around and how you can make it unique in your own way. Because at this point, yes, everything has been done, but that doesn't mean that you don't have scope anymore. You can still come on the platform. You can still bring your own charm, your own uniqueness to it. Just have to be very, very consistent and be unique don't try to be like anybody else uh, because that won't really sell you know there's already that person so be yourself okay Nikita Achra and Anjana both have asked me who do you think is an overhyped blogger or youtuber or hyped youtuber I don't think anybody in India is overhyped I'm just gonna take the Maybelline fixing mist and just spritz this over my face first and why I say that is because in India if you've observed, every single creator, content creator, be it a blogger or YouTuber has taken a lot of time to reach that mark. Like, if Mostly Sin is at 1 million today, she's taken so many years to get there. If Dolly Singh is at 1 million or Kumal Pandey or whoever, you know, and so many other creators who deserve to be at a million are also not at a million. So, content creation in India has still not picked up to the point that people just get viral overnight. I definitely feel who do those viral videos just for views are overhyped, who do uh, videos for, you know, they show one hand, the other hand, fairness in one week and fair face and just edit the photo in their thumbnail and be like fairness in one week and people still watch such content and that is the kind of overhyped content, overhyped YouTubers, these are the YouTubers that are overhyped but definitely the ones I watch, none of them. Abroad, I definitely feel the like Ace Family. The Ace Family is an overhyped YouTuber. I don't know what is it that they do, you guys. I feel like they've lost contact with reality. I know there are a lot of fans, Ace Family fans, and even I watch them. Their children are the cutest children I've ever seen. But it is not that their content is very high up there on the editing or on the shooting. Like, there are such better vlogs on YouTube and they grow like crazy. Like, they are at 20 million now. And abroad, I know people grow like crazy when it comes to content creators. But they are, like, there are other family vlogs that are also so much better. So, I don't understand the hype. I feel they are very, very hyped. I don't, I don't think that they don't deserve that their children are very cute. They put their life out there. That's difficult, but I just feel they're a little overhyped. That's my opinion. If you love them, good for you. Uh, please keep loving them. Don't hate me for saying that. And I'm going to dive into doing my brows now. And I'm going to take the Miss Claire eyebrow pencil. Okay, Little Pixie asks, have you seen a cadaver yet in med school? If yes, what was your reaction? Of course, I have this very first week of my med school. We had anatomy practicals and for that we had to of course see a cadaver. I have not had any unusual reaction. I think I was very comfortable with it. The smell is horrible. The, uh, they put formalin in the bodies and keep so the smell is really 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 bad. Uh, but it did not like I, I did not have any unusual reaction to it. I know people faint and we had such incidences where people faint or people feel nauseous. Of course that smell gave me a little bit of nausea but I didn't end up throwing up or fainting or anything like that and then first session second practical you get used to it like the first practical is a little unusual where you're still getting used to it but by the time you have your second and that practical third fourth and by the end of your first year you're just so used to that like smell that it becomes a part of your life it was it was really fun actually and that practicals were very thrilling for us to see I, I don't know if that sounds creepy but to see dead bodies was fun <laughs> okay for lower lash line I'm going to take the same shadows here in the poison apple palette these two because I think going crazy at this point doesn't make sense it's pretty monochrome the look okay so book laggy hai uh, asks me did you ever have a toxic relationship if yes how did you realize it 
I've not really had a toxic relationship. I've had toxic friendships. Uh, it it can consume you. It can completely consume you. You will not be in the known. You will not know what is happening to you. Uh, till you like really hit realization and be like, I have spent a lot of myself, my energy, and everything, and I'm not getting any returns from that relationship whatsoever or friendship whatsoever. And if that is the case, uh, you cut them off. It's the hard way out, and I hate losing people. I always say that like I can't lose friends or family or whatever. I just can't. But you have to do it. It's the hard, hard route that you have to take. So Kanupriya asked, "Do you plan on moving in with your boyfriend in general? What do you think about live in? Abi boyfriend to hai ni to moving in is not in question. But uh, about live in, I definitely feel you should do it. Like uh, I am all for it." Because uh, that's a good way to know how you are compatible with your partner, and everything sounds and looks and feels good when you are on text and far away. But when you start living with that person, is when the real problems arise. And can you all get through the real problems together in that situation? Because of course, problems are hard. Joga hogi. It's how you get it, get over it together. So if you can do that, have that level of compatibility with your partner, then you'll know now that again you have to spend your life with that person. So it's a great, great thing to do, and if it doesn't work out, so it's fine. But look, so it's not the end of the world. But I, I am all for it. Like if I had a partner tomorrow that I'm very, very serious about, I would definitely uh, try living before I commit for marriage or anything like that. And I think this is the last question that we have: is what made you think that you should start a YouTube channel? And this is by Vidhi and Akansha also asked: please sh share your YouTube starting journey, how or why you started. Uh, so for me to start YouTube, I'm just gonna take this palette right here and take this highlighting shade because there is no highlighting shade in that palette. And um, yeah, I just started it for fun. Honestly, it was like a fun thing to do. I want to uh, get the creative side of me out. After my first year of medicine, I realized that it's getting very monotonous in my personal life. It's like there's no creative side of me coming out. I used to love painting and drawing and stuff like that when I was small and. I can't really let that creative side of me out uh, with medicine, so I decided to go for. So I decided, like with makeup, I could express myself, and if I made videos or on the internet, I just felt like there weren't that many people of color when I started. Girls of color weren't a thing. Uh, normal brown skin hadn't been normalized yet. A lot of reviews I saw online on products were not honest then, so I felt like everything that I feel is missing on YouTube, I could bring that to my channel. So that is why I started a channel and did not just um, do Instagram because that was also an option for me back then to just make an Instagram account and start posting pictures or makeup looks and stuff like that, makeup tutorials, or be like a makeup artist on Instagram and not start a YouTube channel. But I think I am a YouTube person through and through. I enjoy this platform thoroughly. I like that it gives me this community. I feel Instagram is very nice and fast and superb when you want to just post something and just want content production and don't want to form a community but i think youtube gives you that community that no other platform gives so yeah i'm very very thankful to all of you and for all the multiple questions you all asked i had so much fun answering everything i'm just going to quickly add my lashes and my eyeliner and be right back okay i'm back i just added some earrings and a pendant and opened my hair added the lashes and everything these are dream catcher By Glumie Beauty, they gave me a tough time. I don't think they're equal. I don't think my wings are equal. But that's that. <laughs> Let's dive into the lipstick. The lipstick I got is from LA Colors. This is their matte liquid lip color, and it's in the shade Smashing. Let's see how the formula is. It's like very very cool toned and vampy. And I wanted a color like this because I don't have that many colors of this particular tone. This formula is really good. It is. Gliding on so smooth, glides on very velvety, but it's drying down matte. Let's see how long-lasting and comfortable it is. Uh, of course, I'm not running a wet test, but I'll update y'all. Color is very cool tone, very like as if you know, uh, a very very cool tone stone color. But I actually like it. It's tying well with the look. 
Uh, I would prefer a warmer lipstick, but it's okay. We are testing something new out today. All right, so with that, we close out today's video. This is all that I had for you guys. A very, very candid conversation with me. I hope you guys enjoyed. I spilled the beans on almost everything. I don't know if I'll have to cut out something in editing because it's been three hours that I'm sitting here and shooting. So I hope I don't have to cut any questions out. But if I do, then I apologize in advance. If you did actually like this video, then please don't forget to hit the like button. Also, share this video, share my channel with your friends and family. So that we can make the Sara Squad even larger. We are so close to 30k. For today's video, the Sara Squad shout out goes to Aishwarya Vellala. Thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel. If you want to be a part of next video, Sara Squad shout out, then all you have to do is hit the subscribe button, the bell icon right next to it, and also leave a comment down below saying hashtag Sara Squad, and you'll get a chance to be a part of next video's Sara Squad shout out. I will see you guys in another video very soon. Stay home, stay safe, take care. Bye, guys. Love you all.